This is Jordan from Jersey, and this is what I thought of Lost Season 6, Episode 12, Everybody Loves Hugo, and oh my gosh. <laughs> this episode was incredible. Uh, I don't even want to do any edits in this video if I can help it. I'm sure there'll be a few, but <laughs> I just want to get this up as soon as possible because after what was an incredible episode last week, I was ready for, you know, a bit of a letdown. You know, put the pieces in order episode, a ducks in the row, as, as it were. That is not what we got, folks. Maybe, maybe on island a little bit in getting people from point A to point B, but this was an incredible hour of television. Now, I will admit I am a sucker for explosions, especially ones that you don't see coming. We got those tonight, although I kind of said that's a bad place for that dynamite, but it's still incredible. Uh, Zalika Robinson, it was nice having you on the show while you lasted. Maybe I'll show up in the sideways verse. Quick rundown of the familiar faces we got from past episodes and seasons. Michael, back from the dead, giving Hurley advice. Libby, in the sideways timeline. We finally figured out maybe why she was in the mental hospital. She checked herself in. We can maybe assume that that's the same in both universes. Uh, Dr. Brooks, I believe is his name, from Santa Rosa. It was always nice to see him again. Uh, Hurley's mom, of course. Pierre Chang. That's always awesome to see. And uh, and uh, Locke kind of shows up at the end there. <laughs> and in and, and a moment where I went, oh, he's not, is he going to do, he's not, is he going to run him over? He ran him over. And that was cool. Not that I, I don't, I don't uh, condone that. Don't run people over kids. It's not a good thing unless you might be helping them cross over into an alternate reality. But still, that's, that's, that's an iffy subject legally. It was very nice to see that they're keeping the Desmond storyline at the forefront of things. Look, there's not much loss left. Six hours of Lost left, counting commercials, all right, so it's kind of weird after last episode, hey, awesome that they're setting up this thing and that Desmond's going to help people see the other side, but we don't have a whole lot of time to do that in. In this episode, he helped Hurley, uh, Libby didn't need helping, it had already happened, and he went to help Locke in a very interesting way, got to see Ben Linus as well. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to find out from the preview next week whether or not he actually helped Locke. I worry that there's some way that the smoke monster would be able to cross over instead of Locke. I don't know if they have quite that type of bond, but it was an interesting look in Locke's eye. Was it recognition? Or was it, hey, I could be evil or good depending on your point of view? Next week, and presumably the next four weeks in total, is this what Desmond's going to be do doing? Uh, going around to running people over and uh, putting them in touch with crazy ladies? I mean, I hope so, and I hope they find new and exciting ways for him to do it every week because uh, running people over can get a little stale, I've heard. Don't quote me on that. Um, and then I'm assuming the final two hours will be the Jacob and Smoke Monster episode that we've all kind of been waiting for. A, a giant answer this week. What are the whispers? The whip whispers are the ghosts of people who cannot move on from the island. So the island might not be hell, heaven, or purgatory, but for some people, it kind of might be all three, depending on which people you're talking to. We also got reappearances of Weird Bloody Kid in the Jungle. Uh, we saw him a few episodes back, didn't know exactly what was going on. He seems older this episode. Now, there's two theories out there. One is, hey, it's Aaron. The other is, hey, it's a young Jacob. The other is, well, so there's three theories. The other is, it's a young Jacob and an older Aaron, and they're the one and the same person. That's why Aaron's so important. It could be. But if he's getting older, does that mean at the moment that this specter, for lack of a better word, this 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 uh, avatar, at the moment he reaches adulthood, does Jacob become reborn, whether in Jacob's body or in one of the candidates' bodies? Very interesting to see how that's going to turn out. There was tons of episodes connections in this week's episode. None really uh, hard to figure out, so I don't know if I should spend too much time on them. We finally got to see a date between Hurley and Libby, of course. Um, the date they never had, as was said in the episode, there was a blanket involved, but no shooting this time, which is good because Desmond was playing Peeping Tom, and you never know, he might have tried to complete things the same way they were completed in the other universe with Libby taking two to the chest, but thankfully that didn't happen, or was it one bullet? I don't really care either way. Um, but speaking of Desmond, uh, the way Desmond ended this episode in timeline A was unexpected, or at least unexpected until about five seconds before it happened, in which I went, oh, that's not going to end 
very well. Now, from the previews, we know whether he lived or died based on one shot. Um, I'm not going to spoil it and say wh whether he lived or died, but if he died, for the people of you who don't watch those, those coming next week, spoilers, uh, if he died, that sucks. <laughs> no more Desmond. Um, he's going to stick around in the other timeline, of course, so we still get that story. If he's alive, though, um, what's down that well is the frozen donkey wheel. That's the thing that made the island move last time and started everybody time traveling. Is Desmond's purpose, if he is alive, to turn that wheel? And what happens if and when Desmond turns the wheel versus when anyone else does? Because it's an electromagnetic magnetic, uh, controller of some type. Also, the smoke monster, Locke, fake Locke, man in lock, man in black, whatever you're calling him, mentions that this is not the only well on the island. Now, he could have been speaking in figurative terms because he was speaking in a way that could have been taken figuratively or literally, but if he's speaking literally, uh, have we come across any other wells? Does this refer to anything in the island or in the world that is electromagnetic? Uh, who knows? It's one of those unanswered questions, but tons of answers given tonight, especially the ghosts, the whispers, exactly what they are. Also, why Libby was in mental institution, possibly um, whether it takes death or something close to it to cross you over. No, uh, apparently a kiss works as well. I think that version is preferable. Um, and one theory my sister would like me to throw out is that Lock B will be able to walk after that car accident. Not buying it, but we'll see. Um, that's it for what I thought of this week's episode of Lost. Uh, check back with me next week for more reviews, uh, comic reviews, all that. Uh, please subscribe to the videos. I know this one was kind of all over the place because I'm so excited. That was an incredible hour of television, folks. Hopefully we can ride this wave all the way to the end because that was awesome. S subscribe to the videos. Check them out next week. Check out my older videos. If you have any confusion about how these two timelines fit together, check out my Why Lost Season 6 Has Not Created a Paradox video. I'll put the link in this uh, this video's credits again. Uh, it, it still holds pretty watertight truthfulness there. That doesn't make any sense, but it still, it still works. So watch that video if you're having any questions about how does this whole timeline A, timeline B, why can they see into it, why does any of that work. And also... I might do a, a second version of that video later on, but if you're wondering why things could appear before they've happened in A, or in B, in, in A, so in other words, it's still 2004 in Timeline B, why can something that wouldn't have happened yet in Timeline A, like Libby and uh, Hurley's date didn't happen yet in Timeline A until well after September 2004, just remember that time, depending on what version of fiction or reality you're going by, time is not always viewed as linear. Especially in this show, time is not necessarily linear. So just keep that in mind. Point A doesn't always happen to come before, have to come before point B. Sometimes it's all on a record. You can start a record at any point. The whole record is always there. So keep that in mind. Check out the videos. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week for more Lost. Hopefully, it's this awesome.